What exactly creates deepening in your EFT work? We know it matters. Research shows it makes a huge difference. What factors exactly play into that? Let's talk about one that doesn't get enough airtime. Welcome to the Leading Edge in Emotionally Focused Therapy with your hosts, Dr. James Hawkins and Dr. Ryan Reyna. EFT is a dynamic model that humbles even the most seasoned therapists. Together, we want to come alongside you as you continually push the leading edge of your understanding and application of this wonderful model developed by Dr. Sue Johnson. Yeah, I'm glad we're talking about this key piece that doesn't often get discussed. And particularly, let me give you, you know, Ryan and I typically talk in metaphors and pictures and images. And the image for me as I was talking to Ryan about something that I learned on the road that I thought about a little bit more clearly maybe was learning how to massage the nervous system of our clients. Like there are times when we really need to go in and we get in access to the emotion and we hold them and we contain them in that felt experience in the room. But it's okay to give our clients a moment to kind of reorient their brain and kind of come up for a breath. You know, we've kind of learned this from definitely Leanne Campbell's influenced us on this. Even some people that have done some somatic training, kind of work have influenced us on this. But the key that, you know, early on when I was, when Ryan was mentoring me is uh, studying the work of like people like George and Leanne and many other great trainers is you would see them do this deep experiential work and hold them with it. And then they would give them this moment where they would do an attachment with felt experience type summary that would kind of hold the client, let them breathe, but still keep them focused on the moment where they really wanted them to be. And you would see them do maybe five or six rounds of these summaries at periodic moments through the session. And I'm like, how is it that they never lose focus? How do are they able to take those breaths, but even when, but not move to another spot? And I think the key here is these attachment focus type summaries. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. And and it's a little bit unnatural too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's natural in a way, but it's got to be trained in a way. So I'll throw my metaphor to you. Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about scary stuff in the world to me, I can give you a bunch of lists. But uh, one of them will be uh, open water, de- uh, deep open water swimming. Like that kind of scares me. Mm-hmm. Does that scare you? Yeah, I was just in Cape Cod and uh, there's sharks out there. Okay. So I stayed up. Yeah. Only ankle deep. All right. <laughs> well, I was thinking more like a lake, but all right, we'll go with that. So <laughs> if you tell me to swim out in the open water for a long way, you know, even though I'm a decent swimmer, maybe, um, eventually I start to look down and be like, man, if something went wrong, this could be really bad. So, mm. okay, how long are you comfortable swimming in deep water, Ryan? Well, it, it kind of depends. Maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but I want to be like close to shore at that point. But if you tell me, hey, I'm going to have you swim in deep water, but about every two and a half minutes, I'm going to bring the dock over to you, let you put your hand on this dock, catch your breath, and then we're going to see if you can swim for two more minutes. Like, I could swim all day. Mm. And, and that's what we're doing with these summary statements, and they're a really big deal. When you watch deep work, people tend to focus on, on the kind of cool-looking stuff, which is the, the questions that we use or the use of self or the way the therapist, the alignment, the attunement processes, which are really awesome. Mm-hmm. But one thing that often gets missed is these small attachment focused summary statements, which has the effect of giving their neurological system a little bit of a break, a little bit of a massage, I think you call that, mm-hmm. and then allows space for another deep dive. Yeah. And that's the way when I think I didn't think you had to make that clear. Even massage, I think, is some of the special things we do is like deep tissue, like really pressing. But even a massage therapist isn't going to just do all that. They have these moments where it's a little light touch and it does something to the nerves in your system and your body and the kind of like as I'm not specialized in this, all the fluids that are flowing through your body to do deep deep tissue in some kind of like light tissue work is what Mm -hmm. we're trying to do in the EFT process. And I think for a beginning therapist, uh, which... Aren't we all at some points? Yes. Um, it's so hard to go deep. You're either going deep or you're going to leave and go do something else. So what we're sort of prescribing here is when you're in a place where you need to deepen is to deepen to a level and then give a little bit of a breather with a summary and deepen again and give a little bit of a summary and deepen again and give a little bit of summary for sure in stage two, but maybe even, you know, in, in stage one and sort of a step three 
sort of place. This is key. And, and remembering that every one of those still compounds. Every, every depth move sends energy to the next deep move. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the biggest keys to your really deep breakthrough, corrective experience level uh, emotion. 100%. And if you've trained with me and Ryan and George, you've listened to this podcast, you hear us talk about affect assembly done by Magda Arnold, and we use an acronym called TEMPO. And George will always say, don't just say TEMP, say TEMPO, because he's like, I don't want to forget that O. The O is just as important. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we're saying organize it. Mm -hmm. And it's but we're saying an attachment framed to mm -hmm. it. So it's like, hey, you're doing really good here. Mm -hmm. You're helping me out so much that even here, as you kind of picture that moment that tells you we're in that zone, of course, your body has that response in this part where you think there's some danger between you and your loved one. And then your body has a response and you try to make sense of it. And these are all the things that you do. But out of everything you try to do, to help you to get forward. It just seems like it never works. It just gets even worse. Whew. So that's a great summary statement. If you're keeping score at home right there, that was about 27, 28 seconds. Mm -hmm. You could feel James embodying that with his tone of voice. That's of course, right? The pitch of his, of his voice right there mm -hmm. sends validating signals. Then at the end, he lets out, Oof. Mm -hmm. right? And, and so, and, and that summary statement, it's, it's about attachment. It's about 25, 30 seconds. You know, we're not looking for, when we say summary, we're not talking about a big picture Tango 5 where we're going through all the elements of the, of the thing. No, we're just talking about a very short, validating, I got you, I see you, this makes sense. Let me reflect what I just saw. So reflecting some of the present process. Um, it's, it's affirmation too. But not so much affirmation that you you take it out into positive emotion just yet, right? So that's that's the elements of what we're talking about with these good summary statements. You know, I was talking to years ago. This is before I was a trainer. Talking to my friend Catherine De Bruyne, uh, out of San Diego, and we were talking about George Fowler, and and I don't even know why we were talking about George, but. We were either encouraging him or making fun of him, or both at the same time. Uh, but she was just saying, you know what? What I think makes him so good in his lives, it's not what other people say. It's his short summary statements. That's right. He has a unique gift at pulling out of emotion just for a second with a, with a really dialed in validating sense of a summary, which gives people the oxygen, the, the encouragement, and the confidence to go right back even deeper to that hurt place. 100%. And I think it does that for me. But you know what else it does in a secret way for me? I run the summary through my nervous system. So you thank you for catching around. Like, I'm feeling it because that's allowing me to say, wait, hold on a second. Wow. Because I've been doing all this work to kind of be on your leading edge. I need a moment to give my nervous system to kind of catch up with it too as well. And so that summary makes it come alive in me. And usually every summary I do, it makes me pop back out either with a new image a new, a new maybe emotional handle or a new felt awareness uh, with the client. Because as I'm doing the summary, I keep watching them. And if I'm doing the summary and I see tears start to swell up, like, uh-oh. I see more deep breaths happen, like, uh-oh. Or if I see them slow nod or look down, I'm like, uh-oh. I, I, I'm still in sync with their, their, their affective system, and I'm going to keep working that. And I might relaunch that as my either next go around where I have a choice point or – do we have enough right now to go ahead and send it in the form of an enactment? Good stuff. Speaking of short breaks, let's take one right now. If you like the content of this podcast and you want more specificity and ability to see it, a team of EFT trainers, supervisors, and therapists work together at successandvulnerability.com to create a focused online training program to help you learn how to work in some of the hardest places in emotional and relational distress. Check us out at successandvulnerability.com. All right, welcome back. So yeah, these short summary statements, we've talked about what it does for the client's nervous system, but I want to talk, and, and James referenced this a little bit too, I think it does something for the therapist's nervous system. Doing couples therapy is challenging. My 10 o'clock this morning, it was tough. Knew it was going to be tough, and it was just as tough as I thought. And so me trying to keep my balance the whole time when things are that difficult, I mean, it's not easy. And so, this, so a, a very dialed-in summary statement about what's going on right in front of you, 
how how someone's body is working between their longing energy and their protection energy, as well as what the partner might be doing. If I can reflect that clearly in 20, 25 seconds, it also allows me to stay focused on the attachment moves and not get stuck mediating, not get lost in some one of their big summary statements or their stories. Um, those those short attachment focused summaries allow me to keep my focus as well. 100%. And so I want to kind of move to, and I'm, I'm literally thinking of this on the spot because me and, me and Ryan here, we're not trying to add to your plate, but we like to help give you options to see them so you can, you know, help kind of increase your toolbox. So what I just showed earlier was an example of like, it might be what we would call like an affective summary, summarizing your affective experience as it's been assembled. Another one I've kind of seen maybe Leanne and George do is they'll also summarize maybe just kind of like George will do this thing of, wow, I really appreciate what you're doing here. So let me make sure I'm seeing what's happening here. And he almost does what just has been a, like a little small in-session um, process summary. So you just kind of invited me into that car where that little girl got that deep message. And you're just letting me see how hard it is for her. So you're doing great. You're doing a good job kind of opening that door and letting us see that, letting me see and letting your partner see it. He just gave a little small process summary. And it's almost to remind himself of a landmarker, but it's also just letting the client know like, hey, this is what we've done. This is where we are. And then he'll kind of give like a, and I think this is what we need to do. We need to go back into that car again where that little girl got that message. And he's just kind of doing a scene. Leanne can do that so much too. Uh, so there's affective summary and I think like process type summaries that can happen. You know, you could have those. You could also have like those quick little cycle summaries. So you two wait. I think I'm seeing it even right here. It's happening here in this room where this trigger kind of came up in here when your partner said this. And then it kind of hits your body like this. And then when that hits your body, it kind of makes you want to shut down even in this room. Whew, man, this is what keeps happening between you two. Wow. Okay. And it's just organizing and, once again, it's orienting them to that we're, where we are in the process. Yeah, and it also speaks to um, your alliance a little bit because if a therapist can offer a short, on-task, focus summary, it also says, okay, they know what they're doing here. They're with me, right? Whereas if I pull back and I teach a concept, uh, now I'm misattuned, even if the concept is really good. I, I'm, I've broken the sequence there, which, you know, occasionally breaking a sequence might be necessary for containment. But in an ideal world, we will be able to work with the energy right in front of us and stay in tune with it. Mm -hmm. And then so that's the so for me, that's the only I think three I have. It's like affective kind of these summaries focused on affective experience, maybe process and then cycles. But then also I think of the function of them. I think they help contain the client. We've already talked about it massages the nervous system, gives them a little time to go deep, come up for some breath. But also I think, uh, Ryan, it helps mark change. It marks change in the therapist's brain. And I think for me, it also marks change for my clients. It's been a long time since I've had a client say to me, and this is no shot, but like I think at anybody else if it hasn't, but I haven't had a client say to me, so we're, you know, are we making progress? If that makes any sense. What I mean is because I'm always using these summaries to show it. So hold on a second, y'all. Let me make sure this is kind of where we started at. And then this is where we got to. And I really appreciate that, that as you shared that part, it kind of opened you up some more. And then we came over here and this, and it feels like a smaller still step five, but I'm always using that them to show, to see like where we're breaking through the negative cycle where some glimpses of the positive cycle are coming through, but it's always orienting. I, th I think of it as the difference between exits and mile markers on the highway. You know, exit signs are great on the highway, but there's a little, sometimes I'm just so desperate to get where I want to go. I want to feel a progress. And I like seeing those mile markers that come once every mile, whereas I might not see another exit sign for 10 miles. So I'm like, ah, I need something to give me little markers of progress between. And I think these summaries are a good key to that because it helps their nervous system say, I'm burning a lot of energy, but I am going forward. We're burning a lot of energy, but we are doing something. Here's where you are. Here's 100%. what you've done. Here's where we're stuck. That's really key. 100%. Those actually make the system pr uh, predictable. 100%. Give me your list again. I want to maybe add one more. Yep. So the per the reasons for doing it? Types of summary statements oh, here. Okay. Yeah. Affective experience. Mm -hmm. Process that's happened in session. 
and then cycle just once again cycle summaries as the cycle has been maybe changing throughout the the therapy process. Okay. Yeah. So there might there's probably overlap in these categories, yeah. but w- one I think about is protection. Ooh. You know, making sure that I that I provide a summary into their protection. Today is uh, Monday that we're recording this, and uh, Wednesday, is that right? Yeah, Wednesday I have a live demonstration in front of about a hundred people, and uh, it'll be at home in Arkansas. So those are the hardest for me in terms of like that's where I get nervous still. But anyway, um, one of the things I really want to do between 20 and 30 minutes, I hate to get so specific, but it does, it, it is helpful for me just to kind of, just to kind of have that in the back of my mind. I'm not going to be actually thinking that in front of the, my clients, but I want to go right to protection and I want to spend a, a little bit of time making sure I organize the function of that protection. I want to make sure I honor the good reasons. I want to tell them, I want you to know, I'm glad that you can do that at key times in your life. You had to do this to survive. I I still want you to do this from time to time. You know, and then I want to reframe, but the cycle takes that and twists it and sends this message to the partners. That's also a summary statement there, right in the protection. And by the way, I don't want to do that so much between minute 40 and 50 because it's a little bit wordy, Mm. right? I'd prefer to do that between minute 15 and 30 or 20 and 30 to see if I can kind of unload the gun of that protection move to see then on the back half of that session if they don't need it as much once it's been called out and honored. So I think that's another use of a summary statement. 100%. You know, and everybody has different styles, and we're not trying to say anybody has to do ours. You know, if you found a way that's being true to you that still stays on the map towards change, do that. But, like, you know, I was at a place, and the participant said, like, wow, you feel a little bit more wordy there than I'd want to be. I was like, that's okay. That's fine. That works for you. You know, but for me, these moments of me doing that summary, I am doing affective work. I'm guiding their bodies towards their felt experience that sometimes they don't make it clear and talk about. And what I'm doing each time when I run these summaries, I'm, I'm, I'm running your life experience back past you so you can see it and feel it. And I can see it and feel it with you. And I see each time I do, at least the way it works for me, and I think it has been working, I'm I'm going I'm taking my client towards the place where we need to create change and I'm containing them as well too and I'm letting the, the the session be felt versus just letting their reactivity drag me to wherever it wants to go. I don't know that's just me. That's good. You know, and it's a bigger conversation that we have a lot around here because some people would say and I, and it, it, you know, it makes sense what they're saying too. I think we just see it a little different is is studying the nuance of these moves. Uh, it can get in the way of attunement, emotional attunement, mm-hmm. and I repre- I appreciate that. It's something that that you know I spend time thinking about to try to find this balance. But mm-hmm. end of the day, we see that differently. I see nuance and focus um, in a circle with emotional attunement and use of self, and that they're dynamic and that they are they're meant to create each other, not compete with one another. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the tension has got to be there to say, you know, if you if you have a list of your five interventions in front of you and, you know, you're trying to do what they said on this podcast, you know, you, you're not going to do very good with attunement. 100%. And at the same time, if you're if you're trying to do attunement and you're following the emotion without any sense of what's going to happen when the blocks come in, you're going to have an awful hard time staying in attunement. Mm-hmm. And so what we're trying to do is to open up this circle to let people come in and, and hopefully try to find both. Yeah, and I, I got to piggyback on that one. <laughs> uh, I, I do, when I'm in my between time, when I'm not studying therapy stuff, I still study sports in a way, right? And uh, I've been following Deion Sanders, if you don't know him, don't worry about mm-hmm. it. But in football, American football, they there's this, you know, wide receivers who are the ones that run out and catch the ball. And then they have these defensive backs or corners that cover the wide receiver. And Deion was the best of all time. Exactly. Yeah. And you would look at it and you would just think, like, it's just a bunch of grown men. Whoever runs the fastest or whatever gets to a spot, then that's who's going to win the matchup. Because the cornerback wants to keep the receiver from catching the ball. But it's not that it's not that simple. Just because you're the fastest and have the best hands to catch doesn't mean you win the battle. Deion Sanders has this way of he says he teaches his uh, cornerbacks look at the how the wide receiver is standing and his feet can tell you so much. He's like if that back foot is back like that, then it's telling you this. 
So if that receiver does that, then this is what I want you to do. If his receiver, if he stands with his hips like this, then that's telling you which way he wants to go do this. And what he's saying, and what Dion, he's the best that's ever done it at that position. Mm -hmm. He's like, I figured out the nuance. Mm -hmm. I'm attuned. He he was he was a remarkable athlete. And even though he was maybe the fastest and strongest at times, his nuance and study kept him going at a high level for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between doing therapy and teaching. Ryan and I are trainers. So what we're doing is we're teaching and we want you to understand the nuance so that way you can make it replicable. If everything is intuitive, then it's only based on the nervous system of the person who's either teaching or doing. But if we can study what the people who are kind of high achievers or performers are doing and learn from it, it makes it transferable data to everyone. And it's not just in the mind and the body of the person who maybe originated the model or is a high achiever right. in that way. So that's what we're trying to do. That's the heart of it when I think about it. Yeah. That's Let's a, go. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Dion for a second. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a Dion fan. Um, you know, when Dion would see the, the person line up in a certain way, which is cueing his mind to say, all right, here's the nuance moves I have to defend that. He's not out there with a piece of paper to pen, right? It's a very subtle cue, right? And so he has learned his craft so much that he can forget it, which puts him right in this perfect zone. If you study, if you study um, sports psychology, that's a, a term that gets thrown a lot is an athlete finding their zone. And as therapists, we're not all that different. Mm -hmm. uh, the zone is a, is, is a balance between detail focus and then really not being in your head, just being in your body, like letting the music move you to, to uh, move in towards Sue Johnson's concepts of how she thinks about EFT. Exactly. But you have to know some steps to be able to let the music move you. Mm -hmm. But you also have to let the music move you to hit the right steps. Exactly. And so we want to learn these things so that we can forget these things. Exactly. And, and let the music of the moment bring it forward. Exactly. So the nuance we're telling you about is not – we. Do, it's really about you in your own practice time. When you watch your own tapes, when you do some reps in your own head of thinking through cases and practicing, when you work in your community groups, doing some role plays with people of your, some of your colleagues to practice the nuance. So now when you go into therapy room, it's like, oh, I've seen this before. When my client presents like this, or when I see this, or when this energy comes up in them or in me, I kind of got some ideas here of what to do. And I, I can tell you that's transformed the game for me a whole lot. My nervous system still feels it, but when I notice, like, I have reps for that. So. And one of the best things you can practice is small attachment focus summary statements. 100%. Can you get them to 20 seconds to bookmark your place, to give the therapist's body a chance to breathe, to give the therapist, to give the client's body a chance to breathe, and to feel the security of that? And then not leave it to go do big summaries, but rather go right back into the emotion when it's time for that. So that's that's the challenge for you all now. Go practice doing summaries in about 20 to 25 seconds and just doing the best you can and allowing yourself to feel your summary as you say it. Thank you so much for listening to the Leading Edge podcast. Thank you for listening. We hope this experience helps you push the leading edge in your work to help people connect with themselves and with each other. Please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a five-star review. You can contact us at pushtheleadingedge at gmail.com and you can follow us on our Facebook page at Push the Leading Edge. You can follow Ryan on Facebook at Ryan Reyna Professional Training and on his website, ryanreynatraining.com. You can follow James on Facebook and Instagram at DocHawkLPC. You can also check out his website, DocHawkLPC.com.